The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hi, and welcome back to The Learning Circuit. I'm Karen, and today we're going to make an electromagnet pickup tool. In the last video, we learned about magnetism and how it works with electricity. Electromagnets work by passing a current through a wire. When that wire is wrapped in a coil, the magnetic flux adds together creating a stronger magnetic field. If we use iron for the core of the coil, that piece of metal also becomes magnetized as long as current is flowing through the coil. For our pickup tool, we'll need to actually make the electromagnet. We also need a handle. I want mine to be able to reach the floor, so I'm going to use a three-foot piece of PVC pipe. The nice thing about that is I can also fit my electromagnet in the end. So one end will have the electromagnet and on the other end we'll have a battery pack for our power source and a button to turn our magnet on and off. Let's start by talking about the core of our electromagnet. Now the material we use needs to be ferromagnetic. Now aluminum is not ferromagnetic. Magnets won't stick to it. So to test your material, use a magnet to make sure that it sticks. For our electromagnet, we're going to use a nail as the core. Now, using a longer nail will give you more room for more turns. <laughs> if you use a longer nail, you can fit more turns in your coil, therefore making a stronger electromagnet. Now, another thing you might want to consider is the diameter of your nail. Now, the diameter of your coil doesn't actually affect its strength, but if you use a smaller diameter nail, it'll use less wire. Now, you could use a bolt for the core of your electromagnet, but because of the threads, you're not going to be able to get the wire turns as close together as you could on just a nail. So ideally, you really want to use something with a smooth shaft. When creating the electromagnet, the magnetic force will be strongest at the poles, at the ends of the nails. So I'm choosing a nail with a larger head so I have more surface area for my magnet. Now that we have our core, let's move on to our coil. Now we want to use insulated wire. If we were to use bare wire, then the current could just flow straight through it and it wouldn't have to go around the turns and we wouldn't get a magnetic field. Now we want to use magnet wire instead of insulated wire. This wire has a thin enamel coating, and because it's so thin, we can get our turns and our coil much closer together, which gives us a stronger magnetic field. Our electromagnet is gonna go in one end of our handle, and we'll have the power and switch button on the other end. So we want the lead of our coil to be as long as the handle so we can reach. You can take this excess wire and wrap it in a little coil for now, and if you want, you can even tape it to the end of your nail. Just try not to cover up any part of the shaft if possible. Start wrapping your wire as tight as you can to the core and keep your coils as close together as possible. And then you can push the little coils, the turns, uh, close next to each other. Now, I'm a little on the lazy side, so we're gonna chuck this up in a drill to make this process go faster. Wrap your coil as tightly as possible. You want your turns right next to each other and as close to the core as possible. Wrap only in one direction. If your wire crisscrosses, the current may flow in different directions and make the magnet weaker or not work at all. The same goes if you wrap multiple layers. Make sure it all goes in the same direction. You want to cover as much of the shaft of the nail as possible. Try to make sure that you don't overlap the wire at any point because it could interrupt your magnetic field and cause your electromagnet to not work. Get off there. Okay. Let's move on to our power source. Another way to make our electromagnet stronger is by giving it more amps, more current. Looking at Ohm's law, we know that with a constant resistance, increasing the voltage will also increase the current. Now, it might be tempting to want to use a wall outlet because the voltage is so much higher than a battery, but that's a really bad idea. One, it's super dangerous. Two, it wouldn't work anyway. Now, the power that comes out of a wall outlet is alternating current, meaning it alternates directions going back and forth multiple times per second. To create a strong magnetic field, we need a constant current flowing in only one direction. So we need direct current, the kind provided by batteries. Now I have hooked my electromagnet up to my desktop power supply, which does provide me DC power. I have it set to three volts, which is as much as we could get out of two AA batteries. Let's see how strong it is. Okay. Boop. 
not too bad. But we know that with more volts, we get more current, more amps, and a stronger magnet. Let's crank it up. Nine volts. Let's do this. Oh yeah, that's a lot stronger. Whoop. Yeah. The wire has some resistance, meaning that some of the electrical energy will be converted to heat. So we need to make sure that our power isn't too high that will cause our coil to overheat. What that could do is melt the enamel and cause shorts in our coil, causing it to not work very well or at all. So let's see what happens with three volts. And on. A little toastier. Okay, so that's taking a while to actually heat up. All right, let's see how fast it gets hot. We crank it up to nine volts. Ooh, already getting toasty. Oh, starting to feel some heat. Definitely faster than the three volts, but not too bad. Still, to be on the safe side, we'll make sure we add a power switch so we can easily turn it on and off and try to only use it in short bursts. So I've determined that nine volts is definitely safe to use and should be strong enough for our magnet. Now we could stack a bunch of AA batteries because they will fit inside the PVC, but for ease of making this thing, I'm just gonna use one nine volt battery. I wanted a holder for my nine volt battery, but I didn't have one. So I used a two AA battery case that I had, pulled off the wires, pulled off the springs and inserted a nine volt battery snap. The last thing we need is our power switch. We know that if we leave our coil connected to the battery, it'll heat up. We also don't want to leave it on all the time because it'll drain our battery and that's silly because then you can't use it all the time. So we need a power switch. Now I chose this button that happens to latch, meaning that it can stay on without having to hold it down. Now this can fit in the end of my PVC pipe, but I think I might actually drill a hole in the handle so that it's a little more comfortable to use while I'm holding it. All right. That's all our parts, let's put it together. We'll start by placing our button. First, we'll drill a pilot hole. Then we'll use a bigger bit closer to the size of our button. Unfortunately, the chuck in my drill isn't big enough to fit a drill bit the size I need for my button. So I'm using this reamer that's used for sheet metal to make my hole bigger. Make sure your button can fit in the hole, but don't glue it in place yet. Next, we'll add our electromagnet. So we're going to insert the ends of the wire into the bottom so that they are running towards the hole that we just drilled in the handle. And whoop. Pull the ends of your magnet wire out the hole for the button. To make our tool aesthetically pleasing, we're gonna put the battery pack on the back side. So we need to drill a small hole for the battery pack wires on the opposite side of the handle as the hole for the button. Put the battery pack wires through both holes and glue the pack in place. If you want to further secure it, you can use some electrical tape. It's time to wire up our connections. So I'm going to trim all of my wires to be about the same length. And I need to remove the enamel coating from the ends of the magnet wire. There's three ways to do this. You can melt it with a lighter, which is not always the best because sometimes it leaves a residue, making it not super conductive. The other options are you can scrape it with an X-Acto knife or blade, or use a piece of sandpaper. Make sure that you remove all of the red so that you can see copper on the ends. We'll connect one battery lead to one end of the magnet wire. Twist those ends together and solder them. If you're doing this quickly, you don't have to use a soldering iron, just make sure you twist them really well and then seal it with electrical tape. Either way, we wanna wrap the end connection in electrical tape to prevent any shorts. The second battery pack lead and the remaining magnet wire will get soldered to either side of the switch. Again, adding bits of electrical tape to help prevent shorts. Okay, I'm gonna test and make sure it works before I glue my button in place. Let's try it on. On. Oh yeah. Off. Oh yeah. Well, this is a super simple design for a super useful tool. 
Now obviously, this design can be improved upon. So what are your ideas for making this a better electromagnet pickup tool? Post your ideas on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning.